We wish you a Merry Christmas. 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 We wish Uh, Bonnie and Sen. So this might be a little wonky, but let's see how it goes. Um, so this week we are going to continue with the origin story series um, that we started last week. And this week it's my turn of how Becky got into Overwatch esports. And then oh, we're going to do a... <laughs> we're going to do a discussion of player and hero association which is to say we're going to talk about which player we associate with um when we talk think about when we think of a hero so that's going to be pretty fun actually oh yeah we should mention we should mention that we're taking a two week break yes after this because um you know holidays and also i have to fly back to canada yeah and i have to write my dissertation <laughs> <laughs> Oh, over the new I'm year? I'm the only one who's got nothing on. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably thank that guy who replied to our... Oh, yeah. Gave the context. Yeah, thank you, person. Name? John Reed. John Reed, thank, thank you. you for replying on our YouTube um, for episode two. It was really... Uh, where, where we appreciate the review of the London Spitfire event in London. And But having said that, Soul Dynasty has since released um i was gonna say patches but that's not what this is <laughs> <laughs> patches but irl <laughs> patches but for real soul dynasty has since released some changes and announced some additional details with regards to their fan meet slash guangzhou charge friendly match event so i think that's a big positive i'm just gonna ah i don't like talking about myself like this Whoa, go ahead, it's time to be emotionally vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so my origin story. Uh, I, I debated about whether or not to mention this part because it's not directly related to Overwatch, but I did actually watch StarCraft 1 a little bit um, as a child because it was kind of fascinating. Just the phenomenon was fascinating to me. And also it was actually a very, very big deal at the time it was a genuinely a national phenomenon in my opinion in starcraft esports in korea and you couldn't really it was televised um on like actual tv which i thought was very impressive and cool uh famous players like boxer would literally get interviewed on national tv for his achievements um yeah they it created genuine icons and celebrities so that was just always there in my childhood even if I wasn't watching actively it was like a background to my childhood and then I got into Overwatch esports with the 2016 Overwatch World Cup as did which I think was is kind of the origin story for a lot of people uh, I was very very into playing Anna when she came out she, I thought she was one of the most fun characters I'd ever tried and so naturally like an entire generation of Anna players I watched the 2016 World Cup and I could not take my eyes off Jae Hong playing this hero. It was just a completely eye-opening slash sobering experience. Like, oh, oh, that's how you play Ana. Oh, okay. And then uh, when it came to Overwatch Esports, I watched Apex Season 2 very casually, like kind of on and off. And then I watched Season 3 seriously, like I watched it because at, by season three, I'd become a Lunatic High fan. And I ended up having to watch the finals in a makeup chair, getting my makeup done because it was my best friend's wedding. And I the finals were going on that morning. So I was sort of squeaking and screaming in my makeup chair while this poor lady was like working around my face and my hair, like trying to get me to stand still. Um <laughs> So, and then season four, I watched in despair, obviously. But yeah, yeah that's, that's sort of yeah. how, how we got, how I got here. <laughs> in Apex season four, I remember like I was in Canada, so I had to watch it like in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And 
I remember checking my phone and being like, who the fuck even is GC Busan? No, yeah, quick, <laughs> quick 3 0 for Lunatic High. I'm not even gonna walk, wake up oh. to watch this. <laughs> oh, God. I went to sleep, and then I woke up, Stop. like, for no reason. And I checked my phone, I was like, uh, is the game over yet? It ha- it wasn't over yet. Map 1 had just finished. GC Busan won. And I was like, uh, whatever. It's just control. Lunatic High's probably gonna 3 1 then. And then it went back to sleep. <laughs> Oh, Stop. No. These are traumatic memories. This is this is like these war are traumatic flashbacks. memories. <laughs> this is war flashbacks. And then like, I was like, oh shit, GC Busan just three would Lunatic High, and then yeah, I completely forgot body. the lesson I learned from that from the next for the next one. <laughs> I was like, ah, Lunatic High. Yeah, I think we were this. just like completely in denial when that exactly. first happened, and like the second time round, yeah, it didn't even happen. after they got yeah. knocked out, I was like, that's what? not real. What? That's happening. Happen. What is this? Apex season four. Anyway, oh, <laughs> yeah, that was a weird season. I just remember thinking when they like lost the first map, I was like, "Oh, lunatic high and losing control. Name a more iconic duo." Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <sighs> okay, so that was my origin story, and then the next segment of this week's episode is the Player Hero Association, which I think is actually kind of a cool discussion. Uh, how do we want to do this? Do we want to like just go in turns, like down the list? Yeah, we can go like my first one, your first one, Sid's first one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Bonnie, Bonnie, please start us off. All right, uh, the first hero I have listed is Genji, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I gotta say my boy Hoxal <laughs> for Genji. I, dude, who are like no 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 no. Like Hoxal has moved on to other heroes in my opinion. Listen, li- who are you? <laughs> is the one who has stayed on to like, hey, the hey, one hey. true Genji. Who are you was the first like Genji prodigy or like pro Genji that I really like saw in the hero cuz I was like a lunatic high fan to start with. Mm-hmm. But then you know, I just uh sentimental value. When I think of Genji, I have to think of Hoxal. That's fair. Yeah, the one constant in Runaway, like, through season one to season four. This sounds really bad, but do you want to know who I think of when I think of Genji? I think of Arhan. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Arhan. Oh, World Cup. Arhan, I'm so sorry. He was actually good in the World Cup, and then, like, he just didn't live up to, like, all that stuff. No, but then, like, he... He basically got a new support. Remember when Lucid got traded? Mm-hmm. When Lucid moved to Africa, and then suddenly Arhan was performing way better. Yeah, well, he wasn't getting healed with his pre- previous healers. He was he was just, like, yeah. looking sadly looking for health packs all the time. Yeah, and so, like, as soon as he got a competent healer, Arhan looked fine. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Sen, who is your... Who do you associate with your first hero? Uh, so my first hero is Wrecking Ball, and I'm going to have to give this to my boy Trill. Mm-hmm. Mm, I just remember, uh, I don't remember, it was a random, no, it was Team Australia selection. It was when they were selecting Team Australia, and they were uh, broadcasting their matches, and I watched every single one of those religiously. I just remember, wait, was it Team Australia? I don't remember. It was some match, and I just remember Trill on Wrecking Ball. <laughs> And he would not die. He was just like it was on Li Jiang Tower. Mm-hmm. He hooked his little hook to the middle on um on gardens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then so he was just spinning around and around and around, and he just would not die. That was <laughs> incredible to watch, and that moment is burned into my memory forever. Even though I don't remember which match that was. All right, uh, let's go All to right. Becky with Bastion. Bastion is my first hero, and this is actually kind of a fail association, but. <laughs> Um, there's a very famous clip that a lot of Korean Overwatch fans know, which is from Apex Season 1, where Munchkin was on Rhinos Gaming Titan, and he played Bastion, attack Bastion against Rogue in Season 1. Oh my god! On Hanamura. Oh, I remember um, that now. (laughs) Yeah, it it is this incredibly famous scene, because it was just like, the, the Apex observers would do this thing where they would show someone fail spectacularly and then they would cut to the player's face so what we saw was bastion attempting to cross that gap you get between hanamura point a and point b the outside leftmost like entrance gap uh 
so Bastion tried to hop that, failed and fell down the uh, into the abyss. And of course, because he died, all his teammates saw it, thought, okay, let's just fucking reset. And the, immediately what you saw next was Munchkin hiding his face in his hands, like, oh, god damn it. Like, I, I, I <laughs> fucked up so hard. So that's, that's my Bastion association. That actually reminds me of uh, one of the clips that was shown, I think it was an Intel ad that was shown during uh, Apex, mm-hmm. where I th- think it was Gambler, he was mm-hmm. playing like Ana on defense on second point of Hanamura, and then he sleeps a Winston, mm-hmm. and then he goes back into spawn, switches to Bastion, sits in spawn, and I think immediately melts that Winston and switches back to, ba- like, back to Ana immediately. That's so good. That's so it was good. so good. I just remember that clip. <laughs> okay, so Bonnie, who is your next hero? McCree. Ah, uh, fuck my life. <laughs> um, I would say, out of instinct, it would have to be, like, Bird Ring. Mm. Just because, you know, um, but the Bird Ring's, like, a really good McCree, but he never really got to show it because he had to play Tracer so much. Yeah. And most people would probably say, like, Pine, but, uh, you know, we OG Bird Ring. F's in chat for Bird Ring's McCree, please. <laughs> <laughs> I do think there's a whole host of very capable Hiscan players who could play um, Soldier and McCree and these, all these other heroes who then just became Tracer one tricks for several seasons mm. uh, because of the meta. <laughs> but yeah, like yes. Stitch. Oh, yeah, Stitch. Uh, Stitch. Stitch. Elby has a good McCree. Yeah. <laughs> Eska! Eska! <coughs> <coughs> oh, I've got something stuck in my throat. <laughs> all right so my next hero is hansa and after that i've obviously got libero original flex god original um, flex god yeah the play in particular that i'm thinking of is the one with meta athena on um Dorado, and it was the last I point. I know exactly what you're the, talking you about. You know what I'm talking about. The one, the one where he shoots the, the dragons, dragons through the freaking platforms and like yeah. on the last point. And the observers captured that perfectly. It looks so cool. It was so that cinematic. was like mm, the best shot of Apex history. Yeah. I, and this was this was at a time where like Hanzo wasn't played at all in competitive Overwatch. And so when Libero picked Hanzo, I was like, what? Am I mm-hmm. seeing this right? Like, is mm-hmm. this happening? But that single shot, that single shot is so good, and yeah. And for those who don't know, Han- Libro is known as the in Korea as the national. Um, what's he known as? The head of the National Hanzo Association, which is just a funny nickname. <laughs> but because he was one of the few pro players who would actually pull out Hanzo in pro play, a lot of Hanzo mains in and co- ranked decided to make him leader of the National Hanzo Association. So that was a thing for a while. All right. So my next hero is Doomfist, who as a support main, Mm. I fucking hate, obviously. But (laughs) he's dead now. So he is dead now. Uh, But I think this is a good time to maybe quickly plug Contenders Korea Season 3, because Sparkle on Element Mystic has been tearing it up on Doomfist, as in single, almost single-handedly uh, destroying GC Busan Wave rip. And you can trust her on that because she's a GC Busan Wave fan. I am a GC Busan Wave fan. I saw the VOD. <laughs> and yeah, I... she takes the fucking ill. Oh. And... My condolences. Oh, it, I, I'm fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the thing is, I don't think it's that Doomfist is a counter to GOATS. GC Busan Wave had a very solid GOATS uh, going on. But it's not that Doomfist is a counter to goats, it's that Sparkle on Doomfist was a counter to their goats. So it it's just sort of speaks to how good he was on that hero, I think. Yeah, they're having a patch change between now and playoffs, though. And Doomfist oh, is that's, gonna oof. die. And we all we know that's a great idea. So I'll be I'm interested to see how they handle it. We'll see that. how they go, yeah. I feel yeah, like the Doomfist thing was like a one and done thing anyway, because like yeah. after you do it once, everyone's going to be like, oh, they're going to run Doomfist, and they'll yeah, prepare for yeah. it specifically. Though I will, add, I, w- I do wonder, the, preparing for it specifically might mean that they'll have to get off goats in order to counter Doomfist effectively. Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's but, interesting. Uh, 
Bonnie, who's your next hero? Uh, I've got Reaper, mm-hmm. and there's I. <laughs> Nobody played Reaper um, after I got into nope. Overwatch esports, so the one no. person I can say is Luffy from Clone yes. Panther. Yes, it yes, has to we're be all thinking. Anubis <laughs> attack. Reaper, just, like, he just pulls the Reaper out of his pocket and goes fucking ham <laughs> because no one yes. else can play Reaper apparently. <laughs> yep. I for, I just watched that like I remember it. It was such a long finals. I was like tired emotionally and physically. It wouldn't end. So I was just lying there, like, sideways on the couch, and then, like, he busted out the Reaper, and I was like, okay, I guess this is happening now. <laughs> I just, like, watched it with dead eyes. But yeah, I can't think of, like, anyone else who's actually played Reaper, like, seriously, other than Luffy on that one attack, so. Yeah, it's, I mean, Reaper in general has become a hero that's sort of map-dependent or, like, surprise strategy and i think it really worked well in on during that match apex season three finals um but i also remember that was when miro made the gigantic mistake where yes. reaper was frozen luffy as reaper was frozen and then miro primal rage knocked him out of the range of the blizzard so that luffy could then actually death blossom onto the point i remember watching that with like dead eyes hollow eyes i felt nothing but like <laughs> Like, you know when you just have, like, that hollow acceptance and it's like, oh, I do. So this, is, this is it, I guess. This is, this it. This is happening. Mm-hmm. All right, Sen, who's your next hero? <laughs> so my next hero is uh, May, and I've got Rascal. Mm-hmm. The clips I remember, actually, the ones where he's trolling Bird Ring, <laughs> weirdly enough. Oh, really? <laughs> where he's, like, walling Bird Ring off and he goes, Bird Ring! Murdering. <laughs> <sighs> oh, F and chat for that relationship. I just honorary mention Eska. Mm, yes. Have you? You've, I was surprised clip, you didn't put Eska. That clip on King's Row, where he just gets like think 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 headshots in a row oh, yeah. and he kills like five people or something. That was incredible. Yeah. Um, my next hero is Junkrat, which is difficult because you have three. <laughs> I do have three because obviously I think of Jake. I also think of No Smite in Apex, but then I have an out of game association, which is Jay Hong's laugh oh. sounds exactly like yes. Junkrat. <laughs> it sounds just as manic and unhinged as Junkrat's laugh, so that's why. Um, the fan's nickname for Jaehong is Ryukrat. Oh my god. Ryukrat. Uh, wow, Ryu- that's a yeah. terrifying image. It's, it's terrifying. <laughs> so there's that. Okay. Uh, Bonnie, who's your next hero? <laughs> I have Symmetra. Yes, you do. <laughs> and um, <laughs> This is a very specific associate. Like, it's not anything to do with in-game. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, to go back... Last summer, I was like, you know, I'm like in Hong Kong, so I'm looking at the Asia Top 500 board, mm-hmm. and I find Mono's profile, and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I know Mono, uh, to say the least. <laughs> so <laughs> I click on his profile. Mono, heard of him. I've heard of him, yeah. So I click on his profile, and just out of curiosity, I go back to season one to see where he ranked in season one, and I think he was like top 15 in season one, so pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the very top of his heroes played, he's got like McCree, Tracer, Genji, you know, DPS heroes. And then at the very top, 99 hours, Symmetra. And I'm oh like, season one? Mono was a Symmetra main in season one? Holy shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's not where it ends, though. Mono. And then... <laughs> So I live with that knowledge for like a year. You live with that knowledge? I just live with it. Like it just, it, it's something that like knowledge. happens. And then a year later, I'm watching his stream, as I often do. And someone on his team is like, ooh, Mono, symmetribate at season one. And Mono's like, what? And they're like, uh, you were a symmetribate at season one. You got 99 hours on her. And he's like, no, I don't. That's just a bug. And I'm like, a what? Did he say How's what? That a bug? And then he go, I don't know, he, and then he, like, opens his career profile to, like, prove it to stream or something, and to, like, you know, wreck my perception of the world specifically, I guess. And, uh, he goes to season one, he clicks on Symmetra, the detailed stats, 
Zero games played. Zero games lost. Zero games won. Zero percent win percentage. Everything is zero. Because he didn't play her at all. But because of a bug, it says he had 99 hours on her in season one. That's insane. And I'm just like, I have to lie down. Uh, (laughs) Like, every, like, my entire, like, view of the world shifted in that moment. Which is why I have a strong association of, you know, mono with Symmetra. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. That was, that was... That story went wild places. <laughs> we can move on to Sen now. I'm, I yes. have to recuperate. <laughs> Sen, who's your next hero? My next hero is... Uh, I've got Soldier 76, and I associate this with Birdring because of a specific moment in Apex Season 2, which makes me feel like an old man because all I remember is Apex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's this one moment on King's Row where they were playing defense and... Mm. At least I think it was defense. Mm-hmm. What was the attack? I don't remember. Let's just say it was defense. Um, so it was on King's Row, and it was second point. And Birdring flanks, basically. <clears throat> he goes up onto the little hidey hole sort of place where Widowmaker's stand that's, like, above the choke on, mm-hmm. like, the first choke just as you cap first point. And then he just kills everybody. Like, everyone who's... I think I think they were playing on defense, so everybody who's attacking, they stream through and they don't see him, and then Birdring just murders every single one of them in cold blood. In cold that's blood. His, that's where his eye bags come from! He's, like, he's seen things. He's got, like, the cold eyes of a dead man, a killer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A violent bird. Murder bird. Okay, so my next hero is Pharaoh, and there's a few icon- there's a lot of iconic moments with Pharaoh, but as a hero and in pro play, I associate him very strongly with Pharaoh because I strongly feel Pharaoh is Fleta's best hero, and Fleta is one of, if not the best Pharaoh around. I've seen him. Like, he's such a mild, unassuming-looking young man, but when he plays Farah, I feel like it gets somehow really personal. He goes after these 1v1s, and he, like, personally fucks over the other Farah if there's another Farah on the map. He's very, I am the only Farah in this town. There can and only be one. <laughs> there can only be one. So, yeah, that's mine. Um, that's... Uh, Bonnie, who's your next hero? Oh, <laughs> I just saw your next hero. Yeah. Well, my next hero is a little guy named Torbjorn. Oh. And, uh, uh, this is actually twofold. Since you're allowed to say three people for Junkrat, I can say two people for Torbjorn. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So, first of all, there's, um, obviously, uh, Tobyorn, if you will. Yes. <laughs> From when he, that hilarious open mic, I just remember he was playing Torbjorn against, like, Envious. And yes. Taimu, like, did not know what the fuck to shoot. Like, he didn't know whether to shoot the turret or whether to shoot Toby. And yeah, he just was, shot yes. both and killed neither. <laughs> yeah, just kept dying. So Toby was just sitting there, innocently hammering his turret, while Envious is having, like, the hardest time ever trying to figure out how to break past this. And that was just so funny to me. But another instance was, um, say, Map Hanamura Defense, where mm-hmm. Rascal played the Torbjorn, which is, like, really weird, because usually <laughs> DPS does not play Torbjorn, but uh, <laughs> he did. And uh, he, I just remember one specific moment of him making the jump over the gap, and Apex Observers cut to, like, his triumphant face. Mm-hmm. Another great moment of Apex Observing, by the way. Yeah, I don't remember any actual gameplay, just two very specific moments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, Sen, who's your next hero? All right, so, oof, this might be a controversial one. Not controversial, but this one is, like, a title that is up for grabs, right? Um, I've got Winston, and I have chosen Miro, the original king of the Winstons, even though that crown has since been passed on. Mm-hmm. But when I think of Winston play, I really just think of that one moment when Luna Takaya was playing on um Ilios Well. Yep. And then Winston goes 
I meant to say Miro, but I said Winston. See what happened there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a pharmacy, and then Miro just jumps out, goes fucking ape, and then kills mm-hmm. both of them, and then jumps back somehow before his primal ends. Like, and that I don't Pharaoh think was to Vic. Oh god, that was the. Oh my god. <laughs> I like to Vic. He's a fun guy. I like to Vic too. Yeah, to Vic's a good guy. <laughs> I actually so originally Winston was on my list of heroes, and I. I had like this identity crisis moment where I felt like I wanted to put gesture and not Miro because at this current juncture, I find gesture to be still the most frightening Winston. Of course you would say that you liked Luna the Kai yeah. in Apex season four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. I like, I mean, I agree. I just have like lunatic high brain. Lunatic high fans <laughs> in Apex season four have like, Nightmares about gesture. Oh, we have, yeah, we, oh, we, we scream at night. Did, did you remember gesture. that part on like Eichenwald Bridge where he completely like predicted what Mira was gonna do and just batted him off as soon I as he used his job? Yep. No further questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so my, <laughs> my <laughs> next hero is Sombra. And there, Sombra has an interesting history. I could associate him her, her with Esco, with Roskull. But I think I'm going to go with Guard because Contender Season 1 was a lot of weird things. But part of the joy of watching it was watching Element Mystic's Guard play Sombra. And that was the Sombra meta season for Contenders Korea. It was just... It was both the best and the worst of Sombra because we Mm. saw Guard do really well. But then in their semi-final match against... No. Yeah, semi-final match against O2 Ardient. No, quarter-final match against O2 Ardient. We saw Guard use his EMP way too fast. And actually, if I may be allowed, I recently did an article with Akaros, uh, a Korean commentator for Korean Contenders. And she, I asked her about memorable moments in Contenders Korea that she's casted because I'd asked, I'd seen Wolf Schroeder say, um, say this match between Element Mystic and O2 Ardian in season one, because he he felt like he just watched Element Mystic completely fall apart over the course of five games. And Akuro mm-hmm. said, I completely agree with him. There were two, and she literally like played, like like retold that map play by play. Lee Jung Tower Gardens, Guard had, Guard Sombra had EMP. Lucia was trapped in the white room behind the pagoda nowhere to go everyone's in there all guard has to do is hit lucio with the emp and but he freaks out a little bit and he uses it too fast and it doesn't hit the lucio and the lucio sound barriers and element mystic lose the team fight oh after mm. emp you after, hate to see it yeah yeah it was it was not good well so, i as voice. a runaway fan have very different memories of sombra <laughs> in contender <laughs> season one <laughs> Huxal plays Sombra the way he plays oh. Genji. Yeah, it was not good. It was not he has, good. He has no idea how to play. I feel like Huxal thinks that he'll get like a, a like a translocator reset or something every time he kills yeah. someone. He's just... He plays it like... I remember he used to like just like jump into the enemies and then throw his translocator straight up into the air and then translocate above them. And that was it. <laughs> For no apparent reason. I just would watch, like, what are oh you God. doing? See, We're not someone, making finals this season. As someone afflicted with lunatic high brain, I just want to say Eska. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I still think Eska's um, season three finals are some of the finest Sombra we've seen, truly. God, that was good. <laughs> the one where he, like, on, on a Nambani, mm-hmm. where he jumps up on the thingy, and then he Jumps again in the MPs, that was so good. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so. We go on to uh, my next hero. Oh, you got a good oh. one. You got a good one. It's it's good, <laughs> but I don't know who to say. Tracer. Mm-hmm. There's. You know who we s- want you to say. <laughs> I know. <laughs> who do we want her to say? Who do we want her to say? We... Oh, she like, knows what we... she should say. Okay. Bunny. If she knows what's good for her, she'll know what to say. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh 
Oh my good god. Um. Go do that, fun. <laughs> okay. Um, funny? Well. I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> my gut says save your B. Yes. I have to. Oh, uh, you've made the right just choice. Just because. Yeah, yeah. that's the right choice. Y- yeah. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> because. I think. I don't think anyone can think of any other player than Seb Yelby. Like, even if you like a different Tracer player more, you think of him first because he said that thing that was like, (laughs) I'm the greatest Tracer player in the world. He said said that. that. Everyone remembers that. He's the Tracer player now. (laughs) He's like, actually Tracer. So, yeah. There's nothing more to say about that. I could list out, like, other really good Tracer players, but there's so many of them. Mm -hmm. It would take a really long time. So we can move on to Sen. Oh, okay, I tapped out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, oh, my next hero is Evermore. Ah. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, oh, mean Roadhog. Roadhog, yes, Evermore. Same thing. Isn't that what I said? <laughs> you so might have to next... explain Evermore's significance. All right. Okay, to, oh. To the young God, children. Okay. Alright, Evermore. The very first player, the original Mr. 5K himself. Mm hmm. So, that one match on Dorado. Yes. This was, I think, this was back in Apex Season 2, when he was still LW on Panther. LW Blue. Yeah. He was still on Panther. I was screaming because I really wanted LW Blue to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, when he... Wait, is this Dorado? How come every time... Was this... I'm trying to think if this was the same match where, like, Giannis just walks off the payload on second point, and I was <laughs> yeah. screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that? the one. Is yeah. this... Was that the same that game? Was Dorado. I think so. Yeah. Was that? Yeah. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, like I think, God, they were playing a far mercy, and Evermore just hooks them out of the sky. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, he just walks like to their spawn. He's like completely separated from the rest of the team or anything. There's a far mercy, and then he just hooks them one by one, and that was like, as somebody who played a lot of mercy back then, that was very traumatic oh. to watch. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the <laughs> horror stories. Very scary. <laughs> and I was watching, like, can that happen to me? <laughs> it's more likely than you think. It's okay. There's not that many Evermores in the world. That's Thank true. goodness for that. The legend of SR5000. <laughs> that was him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mist- original Mr. 5K. Gross. Gross. All right. So I, my next hero is Widowmaker. And this is both an obvious choice. Uh, this is an obvious choice, but for maybe less than obvious reasons. Uh, I associate her with Pine because the first Widowmaker montage I ever watched was uh, Pine's. And it was it was actually literally like posted on Kotaku as well. It was one of those montages that really got around in the early days of Overwatch. Uh, and it was just all these Widowmaker tricks that now maybe we are more familiar with thanks to Overwatch League and that entire Widowmaker season... But at the time, it was the first time I watched someone do hook shots. And it was disgusting. That was the most disgusting shit I'd ever seen. All right. Uh, Bonnie, who's your next hero? Um, Reinhardt. Oh, you got a hard, you got hard ones. Oh, yeah, okay. that is hard. Um, who do I associate Reinhardt with? Um, okay, I think I'm going to have to say Kaiser. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. Gotta do it. you know, uh, I'm a I'm a runaway fan. In case I haven't made that clear already, <laughs> you might not know that about me. But a fun fact. Wait, Bonnie, who's your favorite team again? <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, there, yeah, there's several teams that I uh, dabble in, but uh, I would say I'm a, a runaway enthusiast, <laughs> particularly. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that um. You all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm. You know exactly what I'm thinking about right now. I do. We all know which moment. Mm-hmm. You don't even need to say it. But uh, for the benefit of the podcast, I will say it. Um, at the end of the semifinal against LW Blue, it's two two. LW Blue is just flowers. Just orchestrated a heroic push. Oh. They were gonna get held on bridge, but Runaway choked it away, and they almost made it to the end of the map. And there's 50 seconds left. Bumper dies, oh. and runner's like, "We gotta go in. We gotta go in, man." And then, um, I can't, I'm like, I can see it in my mind right now because yeah, I watched yeah, it so many I'm times. Visualizing it. <laughs> and like, Huxall jumps to the left, and he makes Giannis turn his shield, and Kaiser sees his moment, and presses Q as hard as he possibly can, 
and he gets five people with the earth shatter. And he screams that. He screams, they're all down. They're all down. Yeah. The and then the Kaiser. <laughs> and then he just owns them. And then right away ro- rolls it through to the end. Yep. And I remember that moment so specifically. And I think there was like an interview that came out during Overwatch League as well. When someone asked NYXL players, what's your most vivid oh, memory God. from Overwatch? Oh, and Giannis and Mecco both said, oh. getting shattered oh. by Kaiser. And we screamed, oh shit. Oh. <laughs> that was just so funny to me. Oh my god. And one of the greatest moments of Apex Season 2, I would say. Oh yeah. Because of no like question. the story behind it. The build yes. up as well. Yeah, it definitely. was just the sheer hero moment of that play. So yeah. All right, that was so. my Reinhardt pick. Who's your, who's your next hero? Uh, next one, I've got Zarya. And I've put down Hoon just because mm-hmm. I have Apex brain. I've like been infected, and that's all I can think about. It's Hoon. Hoon. I remember back, like, oh, this was so long ago. It was on, um, I don't even remember who they were playing against, as per usual. But this was on <laughs> Hanamura, and Hoon just completely melts everybody. Mm-hmm. To be fair, this was also part of, like, the Zarya meta, and I just remember. Back in the day, people would argue, like, who was a better Zarya, like, Zumba or Hoon? And I, being a Lunatic High fan, always said Zumba. Until I watched that one match, and I was like, oh, Hoon. Hello. <laughs> I think it was because, like, Meta Athena, a lot of their strategy was, like, playing against around yeah, Hoon as for well. Sure. Like, he always got the nano boost, so he could build his yeah. ult in, like, two seconds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, I remember that. Uh, so my next hero is Arisa, and I have down Gesture, and I have been very bullish about <laughs> Gesture's Arisa for a long time. I think he's pretty much unparalleled in terms of being able to use Arisa's Halt uh, mm. skill. I think the way that he combos it with Fury in particular is really impressive. And yeah i I think like I, I think halt in general is sort of an underrated skill, especially the intricacy of it when you need to combo it with someone else's ultimate or someone else's skill but uh yeah, uh Bonnie, who's your next hero uh well, uh my next hero is um uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, wait, I need to time you I need to time you <laughs> oh okay <Yeah. laughs> all right, uh, give me uh thirty okay. seconds. Tell me when you start. You have to count down okay. for me. But, uh, three, two, one, go. Okay, well, so you know I have to say Fury for D.Va. Mm-hmm. Just because there's so many good D.Vas. But Fury, like, all of them specialize in something. Like, some of them are really good at protecting their back lines. Some of them are really good at going in with their main tank. Some of them are really good at ult tracking. Fury thinks of it all. Fury, like, has like a million things going on in his head at the same time. And it's... It's, like, incredible to watch at this point of view because, like, you can see him considering all the possibilities and, like, he always makes the right decision based on the situation. And I would okay, say that... Okay, Bonnie. Thank you. That's in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can keep going. You can keep going. No, no. I- I'm, I'm good. You're good. That was it. You can't give me any leeway on this. I- <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fine. We can move okay, on. Okay, sad. Uh, the next year... I've got Lucio and mm-hmm. uh, someone infected with Apex Lunatic High Brain. I've put down Toby. Because Very I natural. honestly, yeah. Toby was probably one of like the original, like, this is a Lucio player. This is how Lucio think, can be played. I still think mechanically he's probably still one of the best, if not the best, Lucio player. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's just oh, an I interesting to say yeah. about this. Go ahead. But I forgot. No, you go ahead first. No, I think maybe the most iconic moment he had as Lucio was actually not even captured on screen because it was uh, Huxel was chasing after him with Dragonblade as Genji. And yes, suddenly yes. the camera switches and all we see is that Toby killed Huxel. Yes. There was, it was, this was on um Nepal, right? Nepal Village. Yes, Nepal Village. Where he completely jukes Huxel and then it switches and then you just see that Huxel's oh. fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> fucking dead. Yeah. I remember screaming because I played a lot of support. I used to be a Lucia one trick and I remember the trauma of 
pooping at Genji away, trying to wall ride away, and somehow still dying. And I was like, <laughs> don't let this happen to Toby. But he that was a hard it. thing for me to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, my next hero is oh, Anna. And <laughs> I associate her with Jae Hong. I wonder who you're going to pick. <laughs> I associate <laughs> her with Jae Hong. But honorary shout out to the two seconds in Apex season, like, Three where Pine played on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Just, I remember teams were experimenting with like triple support on defense on like yes, Hollywood yeah. yes, at that it was time. A wild season. And nobody could pull it off except for LW yes. Blue. Uh, but I just remember it because it was wild. It was like very weird. And LW Blue fans were also not very happy about it. <laughs> um, okay, so Bonnie, who's your next hero? Ugh, uh, Brigitte. Um, I don't know what to say about her because everyone plays Brigitte nowadays. And, like, she's not a very easy hero to be, like, a star on, you know? That's true, yeah. Especially because GOATS doesn't lend itself to individual spectating mm-hmm. very much. Mm-hmm. And when mm-hmm. it is, it's, like, Rhine or something. Because, like, when you watch mm-hmm. the main tank, you can understand the whole comp. But Brigitte is, like, I don't know. I would have to say, like, Mickey. Just because mm. Mm. <laughs> his Brigitte was probably the one that had the most biggest impact on his team. Yes. Everyone else, like, there are a lot of good Brigittas. Maybe even better than him. But his Brigitte was really, like, the X factor for Dallas Fuel in Stage 4. So, I have to say Mickey. Too true. Sen, next hero. Okay, I feel like... Blah, 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 blah. I can word. I swear I speak English. <laughs> <laughs> so... The next hero I've got is Moira, and I've got GJ Hong down for this one because of that one ad that they have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's just got his coalescence out on point on Horizon, mm-hmm. and he's like spitting around like piss ants McGee. <laughs> <laughs> That's like what Moira's healing beam is. It's like she's peeing on you, but with her hands. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Hand pee. Yeah, it's like. Piss mist. <laughs> Jesus piss Christ. Mist. The newest gamer body spray. Piss mist. Oh, get yeah. out. God. All right. So my my last hero is Mercy. And this is tricky because, well, partly because Luna Dekai was so god shit at Mercy that and oh, they didn't even have a fair odd for a lot, for a long time. So they literally never ran far, far Mercy. That was not something they had in their arsenal. Hey, remember um, when Jae Hong played Mercy? Oh, yeah. No. No, I scrubbed that from my memory. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually associate Mercy still to this day with Adam because I, I thought like he was such a difference maker for Team USA in the Overwatch World Cup 2017. And like you could see that Toby and Jae Hong were just not comfortable on Mercy, whereas Adam always looked comfortable on Mercy. He was just like very aware of how to play the the hero. And I feel like it was eye opening for me in particular because that was that World Cup was kind of the herald of the Mercy meta to come in Overwatch League. I'm still kind of bitter, I guess, that Adam didn't get into league despite that performance. Okay. Um well my last hero is a very easy one, Zenyatta. Oh. Well, oh. there's a lot of Zenyatta players, but wouldn't you agree that there is one specific guy that's kind of risen above the rest in terms I, of notoriety? Honestly, I would rephrase that to say there is just one Zenyatta player. There is only no, one funny. Zenyatta player in the world. and uh, I haven't watched any pro Overwatch in the past year. Tell me, who is this Zenyatta player? Well, this <laughs> mystery man, his name is... Uh, He's a little guy named Jay Jonak. Oh my god, I will murder. (laughs) I will murder you in your sleep. Bonnie found dead in Hong Kong. (laughs) Bonnie found dead in a ditch. You're right. You might have heard of him, even if you're just a casual fan. Uh, Yeah, Jonak kind of like redefined Zenyatta. I mean, there were like people who were doing that play style before, but none of them have done it as well as he has. And I remember when the preseason of Overwatch League happened, uh, when he wasn't old enough to play yet, and Libero played Zenyatta, 
Seoul beat them 3-1. And everyone was like, ooh, NYXL mm. isn't going to be good in the regular season. I'm very <laughs> smart. I know pro Overwatch. And then I was just like, just wait for Jonek to get on that fucking stage. He is going to wreck everyone. He is going to like single-handedly lift NYXL up to new heights. And he did, mm-hmm. because he's very good at Zenyatta, who was a very important hero back then. <laughs> I think like the Mercy meta was more of like the Jonek meta, because Mercy could just keep Zenyatta alive for so long. Because like, back then, she out-healed Winston's cannon thingy. So, like, yeah, if you tried to kill Jonak, you just could not. And uh, <laughs> that's, like, when he made his name as the world's yeah. best Zenyatta, So. Hey, fun fact about Jonak. Did you know that he's actually nine Balenciagas tall? Really? You <laughs> <laughs> measured it? half, <laughs> as a matter of fact. He is nine Mickey Mouse shoes tall. In the future, I, I I propose that all Overwatch League metrics be measured in, in Balenciagas. <laughs> How tall is Fury? He's he's seven point five Balenciagas. I sh- actually I think he's taller than Jonak. Don't ask Jonak me how is I know very that, small. Oh, Jonak's he is, yeah, he's tiny. Kinda short. Yeah, um, so Balenciagas he, aren't that big. <laughs> he wears like the really big jersey, and then he's got his tiny little stick legs, and then he's got his giant Mickey Mouse shoes on. He you know, so Jonak's funny. arms are like really short. <laughs> like they are very they are. strangely like, short. Mm. <laughs> and I think that's also emphasized by the fact that his jerseys look so long on him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like they don't. Like, it looks like they don't even reach his hips. <laughs> that's how short they are. I actually was playing competitive a couple weeks ago, and I got. Uh, jo- I joined a group, and the leader of the group was this girl who was asking everyone if they were watch if they watch Overwatch League, and I kind of stayed quiet because I just wanted to hear what other people <laughs> had to say. And then she said, "I just cannot get over how good Jay Jonak is," and uh... I, ha- I had to physically bite my tongue, like physically bite my lip, so as to not scream at her. It's not J- Jonak, for God's sake. Well, but um. You gotta look forward to Janu next season Jijanu. as well. <laughs> Jay Janu. All right, so this has been... Yeah, oh, yeah, Sen, do you want to do the honors? So this has been a Hot Pot with Sen, Bonnie, and Becky. It's been a pleasure having you. I hope you guys have as much fun listening as we have fun recording this. Just a small reminder that we will be on break for two weeks with the holidays and everything. So we'll be back on the 14th of January. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy holidays, Bye. Sam. Happy holidays. Oh, yes. Gotta be inclusive. <laughs> Non-denominational. 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 Yeah. Merry Christmas.